the hammer faster. Get going. Yeah, hurry up there. I'm getting hungry. Come on, Roy. Hey, somebody's a shoot. No. Why, they are too. I hear them. Sound like it's over to the dam. Let's get going. Follow my orders. Use all the force that's necessary. I'll have the sheriff over from his ranch right away. Hello, operator. Give me 21, party in. Hello. Hello, sheriff. There's another fight at the dam. Those ranches are broken loose again. Well, why don't you give them some order then? That's our business. Are you going to do your duty or do we have to kill some of those fools? All right, I'll get out there as soon as I can. I bet that's Lem and Hank. They wasn't fooling when they said they was going to raid the dam. I guess you're right. Hey, there's a couple more of them company guards. Yeah, well, I'll stop them. Might as well surrender. Hold it. All right, keep him up. Hey, you. Come on, let's get to that bell. coming down there. It's probably the sheriff. You better go home and take care of that arm. I'll get the water to you. All right, Roy. Well, we've got to work fast. Blow the lock and open that valve. Turn them guards loose. Wait a minute, Sheriff. Hold it. Don't you point that gun at me, Roy. Well, I don't know how else to keep you waiting, Sheriff. The old timers are getting this water needed mighty bad. I'm going to have to take you in. Take it easy. We'll go along to jail peaceably as soon as we get enough water. But not until we do. I said take it easy. That's a fine way for you to act. Roy Rogers, son of a congressman, fighting the water company. If my dad had lived, there wouldn't have been any water company. Just the same, the law's the law. And property's property. And there goes ours, a hundred feet a second. Make them turn off that water. Hey! I dropped the valve wheel. You fellas got any other way of shutting that water off? There ain't another valve wheel like that in the whole county. All right, Roy. There ain't no use you holding us here any longer. Don't be downhearted, Sheriff. 
You won't be so chipper when you get behind bars, Roy. Behind jail bars, huh? Well, Sheriff, that reminds me. Send my mail to the county jail. Send our mail to the county jail. Tell our saddle pals tonight if they've got some news to light. Send our mail to the county jail. Say goodbye to your favorite gal. Say goodbye to your special gal. We're supposed to have a date, but we reckon we'll be late. Say goodbye to my favorite gal. Tonight when coyotes howl and mountain lions growl, I'll be watching the moon and counting the stars. Can't you see me looking through the jail of bars? Pass the hat and collect our pay. Pass the hat and collect our pay. If they ask you where I am, say I'm in an awful jam. Send that day to the county jail. Oh, oh, oh. You said you was coming along peaceably. Well, I did, but Nellie didn't. Once a fire horse, always a fire horse, Brogue. You mean every time that knothead hears a bell, she's going to act like that? That's right. <laughs> she ain't with me. I'll give her a good selling before anybody finds out about them tricks. <laughs> <laughs> Stop this noise. You're disturbing the meeting. Well, Roy, my boy, I'm glad to see you. Well, how are you, Mayor? Fine, fine. I see you brought all your boys to town for the meeting. Come right in, boys. They can't. They're under arrest. What's the charge? I don't want Roy to miss the meeting. He's charged with trespassing on the water company's property, fighting with their guards and stealing their water. Hooray for Roy! Hooray! 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 If that's the case, I'll hold court right here and now. I'm sorry, boys, but uh, I'll have to punish you. I fine you for disturbing the peace. One dollar in court cost. No, no, you can pay the clerk later. Come on, you're late already. <laughs> Before we criticize the congressman who has represented us so ably for two terms in Washington, let us remember. Let us remember. Just a moment. Just a moment. Wait a minute. Pardon me, but there happens to be a meeting going on here. Well, I'm sorry, Richards. Uh, as the son of a former congressman, you should have more respect for a public meeting. It seems to me that you should get here in time in order to be posted. Well, I'm already posted. Oh, you are, are you? Sure. Mayor Big started out by talking about high water rates. Then he showed a picture of Congressman Scully and denounced him plenty. And Mayor Jenkins of Hilton City, founded in 1848, said the water was free then that ought to be free now. And it was time the federal government did something about it, by gosh. And you, as uh, manager of the water company said that I'd like to lower the water rates, but uh, we're losing money. Marvelous, Roy, marvelous. Practically word for word. But how did you know? Well, that's easy. You've all been saying the same thing since my dad was congressman. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I still have the floor. As I was saying before I was so rudely interrupted, let me remind you that Congressman Scully is the only man among us Fitted to go to Washington and represent the Great Western Water and Power Company. The Great Western. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I still say 
that the best man fitted to represent you in Washington is the man whose face you see on that poster. <laughs> <laughs> the people's friend. <laughs> Folks, I just held court for a man who really deserves that title. He was brought before me for fighting the water company. Now, are we going to send him to jail? No! no! Oh, shall we send him to Washington like we did his father? Yes! yes! Take a while. Mr. John B. Fairbanks, president of the Great Western Water and Power Company, Washington, D.C. Look at that, Andrews. <laughs> Rogers, but congressman. He hasn't a chance. What do you know about Western politics? You're a Washington attorney. Why, with beating up our men and stealing our water, that boy is a hero to those people out there. Don't forget all about it before Election Day. See no cause for alarm? Oh, you don't, eh? Then you need glasses. We're leaving for Sageville tonight with Congressman Scully. Oh, but, Dad, we can't leave tonight. Oh, we're just mailing out the invitation to our reception. Postpone it. Oh, Potter! Well, hello, Richard. Well, how do you do, Mr. Fairbanks? You know my daughter. How do you do? Mr. Andrews. Glad to see you, Andrews. Andrews. And Congressman Scully, of course. Richard. Welcome home, Congressman. Your campaign is on full blast. Campaign, my foot. Folks have never elected anybody. Somewhere out there on the prairie my guardian angel divine is there at rest somewhere in the west that kind dear mother of mine I'd give all I own today if someone could guide my way to that hallowed spot where she's sleeping, that tiny mother of mine. he'll get that way. You bet your life he will. Don't forget there's plenty of women voters. What do you think, Eleanor? Would you vote for him? He has a nice voice. And that's all he's got. He can't campaign without advertising. He has no money for that. I know this Western country, and I promise to the throne. I'll prove when he's elected that my steers are never wrong. Let prosperity begin. Bring the bell and vote him in. It's Rogers for Congressman. On your vote, vote for Rogers, ring the bell. On your vote, vote for Rogers, sing the well. I know this Western country, and I promise to the throne. <laughs> You don't need money for advertising if you have brains. Brains? Yes, brains. Get hold of Rogers. Tell him I want to see him at my hotel. Important and personal business. Yes, sir. My boy, you're doing fine. Thanks. Well, how's the campaign manager? Well, everything's under control. 
Hello, ma'am. Hi. Hello, Rogers. Can I speak to you privately for a minute? Anything you have to say to me is all right for my friends to hear. Hello, boys. Hello. Hi. Hello, Frog. Hi. <laughs> Very funny, boys. <laughs> Very funny. Mr. Fairbanks would like to see you over at his hotel. He said it was very important and uh, personal. Sure, why not? Tell him I'll be over tomorrow. Okay. I bet that guy Fairbanks is scared, and he's going to talk turkey, you see. Maybe. Anyway, it'll give me a chance to tell him what I think of him. And that'll be plenty. 50% cut on water rates. Don't make me laugh, Mr. Fairbanks. Let me tell you something, you coot. You've run this country into the ground long enough. Sixty percent? <laughs> now, I didn't come here to haggle, Mr. Fairbanks. It's seventy-five percent or nothing. So I'm driving a hard bargain, Emma. Well, that's too bad. But here's my last word. If you don't knuckle down, we'll run you and your cutthroat crowd right out of business. Bravo! Bravissimo! Keep going, partner. You got him on the road. Hello. I, I don't generally talk to myself like this. I was just sort of rehearsing. I'm doing very well, too. But uh, how about putting a little more emphasis on your exit line? As I presume it is your exit line. Probably. Uh, old man Fairbanks is apt to kick me out when I get that far. I gather you're not exactly an admirer of John Fairbanks. He's plenty tough. Probably the kind of a man who beats his wife. He does. I heard he shall act his daughter on occasion. But then she probably deserves it, so... No doubt she does. If I'm elected, I'll get federal water for this state if I have to hog tie every politician in Washington. Good for you. I hope you're elected. Thanks. Well, I guess we'll be going. Well, I'm going that way, too. We could ride along together. Swell. What is your daughter doing with Rogers? Huh? How do I know? Well, I don't like it. Tell that to Eleanor and see what happens. Oh, gentlemen, may I present Mr. Rogers, Mrs. Tom Andrews, Mr. Richard, you your do? worthy opponent, Congressman Scully. How are you? And my father, Mr. Fairbanks. Your father? Yes. Oh, by the way, Dad, Mr. Rogers considers you a skin flint, a penny-pinching pirate, and a... What was that? Sounds to me like you just about covered the territory. Beat it, brat. We want to talk business. Come on. Oh, that reminds me, Fairbanks. Uh, is it true you beat your daughter? No. But it's a darn good idea. <laughs> you sit down. You seem to have a lot of common sense, Rogers. I think you're the man I need to look after some of my business interests. That'd mean giving up my campaign for Congress, wouldn't it? Well, yes, it would. But your salary would be three times as much as you'd make as a congressman. Thanks, but I have a family weakness for going to Washington. I'd like to see some of the places my dad told me about. Would uh, four times as much money interest you? No, nor ten times as much. You might regret passing up a mighty good proposition, young man. Now I'll make you one. Either your company cuts water rates to the bone, or I'll get federal control of water in this day when I go to Washington. When you go to Washington, well, you are not there yet, Mr. Rogers. Imagine a congressman dressed like that. <laughs> Take off those clothes. Well, what's the matter with them? Well, this for one thing. Say... And this. Why, what is... And those pretty spats. The voters want a man to represent them, not a city dude. You're going to be a man of the people. You're going to wear western clothes and ride a horse. A horse? Yes. I can't ride. But you will ride. What? Yes. <laughs> Oh, Nelly. 
And just now, friends, the people are giving Congress and Scully a grand ovation. Just listen to all those cheers. You know, friends, a few days ago, I thought that Rogers was their choice. But now, it looks like a landslide for Scully. <laughs> and now, ladies and gentlemen, you will hear from your candidate for re-election, William P. Scully. <laughs> Friends, my friends, it's great to get into these clothes again and to feel a horse beneath me once more. Here's a round-by-round round description. The son of the saddled horse has just run away with him, and Congressman Roy Rogers has rescued him from the horse trough. We're in now with Rogers Electric. Letting a hick rancher out smart us. You insisted that I ride a horse. I told you oh, I... Oh, shut up and get out of here. Well, now, that's the way you feel about I'll it. Get but... out before I lose my temper. No, you don't. Whipped. By a smart aleck yokel. How does it feel to take a licking, Dad? Licking? Yeah, this is only round one. We're leaving for Washington, too. Now, block him there at every turn. Do you know any cow hands that use his perfume? Thanks for the send off, folks. And don't worry, I'm going to see that that water bill goes through pronto. I figure I'll be back in about a week. <laughs> Now, me, being Congressman Roy Rogers, is here personal executive and secretary. I promise that if Roy... <laughs> Roy hey, wait for me. Wait for me. <laughs> Congressman Marlowe's office, please. Good morning. Congressman Rogers calling Congressman Marlowe again. Oh. Well, when do you expect him? Yes, please have him call me back. I don't know what Marlowe has an office for. He's never in it. Well, he's got to have some place where you can find out that he ain't in. Anything important? Oh, no. Just the usual 411 Constitution is wanting to know where that federal water is you promised us. Well, so do I. Ain't there nobody else you can see about that water bill? No, sir. Marlowe's the money man, and he has to be seen. Hmm. Who's that from, Marlowe? No, it's not even signed. But say, listen to this. If you want to meet Congressman Marlowe, join the fox hunt near his country estate next Saturday. <laughs>
Hey, it sounds like a jailbreak. We better get out of here. Them bloodhounds is vicious. The hunt started. Come on. All them hound dogs against one poor little fox. They ain't no justice. Hey, that horse is running away with her. you're doing? I thought your horse was running away. No, but the fox is. Why did one is brushing another hundred yards if you hadn't played lock and bar? I'm awful sorry. Oh, well, it doesn't matter. See, tell me, uh, how's the singing congressman making out in Washington? Not so good. The only luck I've had so far is meeting you again. I've tried to follow your advice about seeing Congressman Marlowe, but he dodges me like a wild mustang. My advice? Well, nobody else I know uses perfume writing paper. It's mighty nice of you to show me the ropes, even if Marlowe is too busy crashing society. Well, he's not crashing society. Congressman Marlowe gave this fox hunt because he wanted a political favor from one of his guests. Well, like a medicine man putting on a show to get his customers in mind to buy. <laughs> yes, that's it. You see, here in Washington, that's the trick to get to the ear of the right person. Well, I couldn't very well give a fox hunt. No. No, but you could give a party. Well, who'd come? Oh, look. Get these hound dogs out of here. Wild away. Hey, what's happened? <laughs> Shoot. Wild away. Get out of here. Shoot. Get on away from here. Get out of here. Get these hound dogs out of here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Dad, you remember Mr. Rogers, don't you? What? Oh, oh yes, yes. Well, how do you do? Oh, Congressman Marlowe. This is Congressman Rogers. Glad to know you, Mr. Rogers. Well, how do you do, Congressman? I'd like a few words with you. I want to ask you to... Uh... Oh, um, to be a guest at next Tuesday evening at the Fairview Country Club. Oh, all of you, uh, Mr. Rogers is giving a surprise party. Doesn't that sound exciting? Oh, well, uh, you'll be there, won't you, Senator Wilson? Certainly, Miss Fairbanks. <laughs> and no party would be complete without you and Mrs. Marlowe, Congressman. <laughs> I adore surprise parties. Of course we'll come, won't we, Edward? Why, well, I think it's perfectly sweet of Mr. Rogers to invite us all. <laughs> don't you, dear? I don't know anything about these Eastern parties. We'll make it Western. Swell, I'll send a wire to Larry and the boys. Join hands and circle down south and a little, little moonshine in your mouth and lose your hopes and grand tail back to the lady in the lead. Oh, the man you left and right, your partner go right and left in a hurry up, boys, and don't be slow. There's chicken in a bread pan picking up dough and to meet your partner on all floor. Beat your honey and a patter on the head. She don't like biscuits, feed her cornbread, and chew my tobacco and squirt it on the wall and swing that gallow she eats too tall. Roger certainly has a peculiar idea of entertainment. Yes, isn't it quaint? I don't know when I've had such a good time. So far, folks, all you've seen of ranch life has been a lot of fun. But there's another side I want you to see. And that's a surprise, I promise. <laughs> These first scenes are the way our ranches used to look. Every range had grass like that in the summer. One winter covered it with snow. We had plenty of that good alfalfa for feed. We fattened our beef on that grain. Every valley and every canyon had a stream of running water. Then nature took a hand. Every year we had less and less rain. This is what happened. 
dry spells, drought, and dust storms. After the dust storm, this is what is left. That's Glenn Saunders' house. He lost his two children from dust pneumonia. That's Luke Chalmers' place. He just gave up and moved away, never even stopped to dig up his equipment. Those cattle are Dave Peters. He lost 150 head, which meant ever since he owned. All of this tragedy and ruin, ladies and gentlemen, because of lack of water. In times like these, folks just naturally turn to prayer. Dust, dust, dust in the skies, dust on the trail, dust in my eyes, dust, dust, can't see the sun. Can't find my way, the dust has won. The cattle and the sheep, better down the sea, seem to realize their pay. The vultures in the sky, know the time is nigh, will they fly away, away? Oh, Lord, he keeps my pay. Must it be? Can it be eternity? It was a home where the buffalo roamed, where the deer and the antelope played. Here was a place where the cattle would graze, the corn and alfalfa once swayed. Where are the ranchers, the cow punching crowd? What has become of the rain? Out of the blue came a threatening cloud, causing this awful change. Oh, Must it be, can this be eternity, oh Lord, have mercy on for me. We've got to get busy on that bill, Marlowe. I agree with you. Rather unethical, but very effective. I'm going west in about ten days, and I'll get you relief if I find those conditions existing. You have my support on that water bill, too, Rogers. Dad, it looks as though you've lost round two. Well, you needn't rub it in. Think it's funny, do you? Fairbanks, I had no idea that conditions in your state were so serious. They are. And I'll take you out there and show you that Rogers misrepresented things. Well, I hope you're right for your own good. After all, it's uh, your water company that's on the spot, you know. Young woman, you help stage this entertainment. Do you realize it might ruin my water company? Oh, one of your water companies. Are you in love with this cowboy? Oh. Oh, well, I, I don't know. Yes. Well, you tell him for me that he's in for the doggondest licking he ever had. Oh, yes, I'll tell him. But he won't believe me. Say, that was swell. And the way you was calling them ranchers out by their names, you even had me fooled. You think they's neighbors, Howard. Oh, weren't they? No. Those pictures were taken in another state, Eleanor. I couldn't get a newsreel of her own dust storm. Tell me, my friend, is your middle name Barnum by any chance? Oh, no. His middle name is James. Oh, I see. After Jesse. Oh, no. Leaving so soon, Mr. Fairbank? Yes. And I'll wipe that grin off your face yet. Never mind. You were grand. With your help, 
Uh, when will I see you? I'm leaving for the West pretty soon. Now, what a coincidence. So are we. Come along. Oh, yes, Daddy, I'm coming. And so I take great pleasure in introducing to you the most important man who ever hit Old Sage County and the only man who can give us federal controlled water, Congressman Marley. Fellow citizens, as chairman of the Appropriations Committee, I am authorized to announce that we are here to make a study of the drought conditions in this section. Better cover up fast, Congressman, before the newspapers get wind of this. However, we have already learned that conditions are not as bad as we were led to believe. And we find that existing utilities are quite adequate for the present. Now, that is all. Thank you for your kind welcome. I said your methods were unethical, but I underrated you. You're nothing but a cheap trickster. I admit the film I showed you wasn't taken in this state. But conditions here are just as bad, if not worse. As far as I'm concerned, young man, that bill never will be passed. I'll back you up on that, Marlowe. I had a right to trick you when the lives of these folks depend on water. If you don't think this country's dry, just look it over and see for yourself. Sorry, but I'm not interested. But I came all this way to see the drought conditions and the death storm. Now, don't be silly, dear. There aren't any. Uh -huh. I told you I'd wipe that smile off your face. You've had very capable help. I should have known better than to trust a woman with a secret. Edward, I'm so hot and dusty. Perhaps we'd better not go any farther after all. Sorry, dear, but it's too late now. You wanted to go, so I promised Mr. Fairbanks I'd meet him at the dam. But, Edward... Get out, all of you. That the drivers, we're taking the cars. This is an outrage. I'm Congressman Marlowe. You can't leave us out here afoot. You can use our horses. Well, there's only one thing to do. Take the horses and ride back to Sageville. What a dry country. I don't see how people live here. It wasn't always like this. It wouldn't be now if the farmers had water. Evidently, you still believe in motion pictures. Listen. Listen to there must be a camp ahead. Rain. And that means a drink of water. The old chuck wagon rhythm starts about noon. Then you'll hear those cowhands sipping soup very soon. And there's music to the rhythm, music to the rhythm, music to the rhythm of the rain. Folks, nice of you to drop in. Hello, Congressman. Don't tell me you're making an official tour of the drow section after all. We're making a tour, all right, but not an official one. Why, we were held up by bandits, and they took our cars away from us and made us ride these horrible, bumpy horses. We'll tell you about that later. Right now, we're too thirsty to talk. Gee, that's too bad. Yeah, and ain't that tough? We only got about a pint of water left. We don't give it to the horse. You see, we didn't expect to have any visitors. You mean you can't even give us a drink? Well, we might find enough for the ladies, but the men will have to wait till we reach Larkin's place tomorrow. Get the canteen, Frog. You folks, just make yourselves at home. Boys, unsaddle the horses and fix them a bite to eat.
That's all there is. You can see a day and the winding trail when a cowboy sings a song. You see grazing herds and the prairie birds when a cowboy sings a song. When he sings, get along, little doggy, get along, you can see an old corral. When you hear yodel You see him riding to his gal. Can't you see the way and the place to rest when a cowboy sings a song? Much farther to this Larkin Ranch? Not so much, just the other side of the river. River? Did you say river? Where? Right there. Used to run bank full when everybody got the water from it. Oh, but what happened? Your company built the dam and dried it up. Dried it up? Well, everything seems dried up in this country. That's what I tried to tell you. Say, that looks like a water wagon. Hey! hey! Stop! <laughs> Can we have some water? I reckon you can, mister. Right around behind. Come on. Well, Mrs. Marlowe. Marlowe? Ain't you the congressman that was going to do so much for us ranchers and then change your mind? Well, yes, but then conditions were misrepresented. And... Well, you sure fixed it so I got to haul water 20 miles. None of you get a drop. Oh, oh now, wait. Oh, you no, hold on. That that isn't right. Right. Oh, okay. Oh, come on, now. Drop. Hey, wait a minute. Hey, listen, you that's not right. That. We've got to have water. Why didn't you help me stop him? He has no right Just to refuse it. Just as much us. right as your company had to refuse the ranchers' water. No, it's a dust storm, and it's coming our way. Dust storm? What'll we do? You saw pictures of one, Mr. Marlowe. Now you're going to see the real thing. We've got to find shelter. Come on. Roy. Where's your husband, Mrs. Larkin? He's going to town for grub. He ought to be back pretty soon. Have you any water? We have some now, mister, but the cistern will be full of dust after this storm. Cistern? I thought you said the Great Western Pipeline ran through here. Well, I, I'd been informed. Of course, the water company wouldn't misinform anybody, would it, Andrew? The pump's in the corner right over there. Help yourselves. Anything we got here, you're welcome to. <laughs> Do you have dust pneumonia out here, Rogers? No, you needn't worry. 
We don't even have dust storms here. They have them in another state. You needn't rub it in. <laughs> I can't stand much more of this. I thought you were the one who wanted to see the dust storm. Oh! <laughs> Dust storm's over. Well, what do we owe you, Mrs. Larkin? Land sakes, mister, you don't owe me nothing. Roy paid me yesterday. But we weren't here yesterday. So the whole thing was a frame-up, eh? Everything but the dust storm. That was an added attraction. You mean the hold-up and the water wagon were planned? That's right. I see nothing to laugh at. Young man, I want to shake you by the hand. Your methods are not only unethical, they're phenomenal. But don't you worry. I'll okay that water bill. Thanks. Roy, the ranchers are headed to blow up the dam. Rogers, if they blast that dam, they'll lose government support. I'll stop them. I'm Congressman Marlow. Head for the dam and step on it. Thanks for the warning. We'll teach them a lesson. Stay here a while and make sure. Yeah. Did you see them? Yes, we turned them back. They've gone over the hill. Come on, get back here and get down. I'll never get to the dam now. Unhook them horses. to do is to turn that dynamite wagon loose down that hill, blast the ditch in the water cap, get to the dam. Get that wagon to roll. That's the dynamite wagon. We better get out of here. No, wait. Oh, 
old book for Rogers ring the bell. On your gold book for Rogers ring the swell. He's won the fight for water. What does a man want now? I'm out to win a bigger stake and you can show me how. If you want a happy life, just say yes and be the wife of Roger, the congressman. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> 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 <laughs>